All right, we're ready today. We're gonna to tie a red analid. Uh, I will tell you that I'm gonna use a red flex floss to tie the analid and no thread, no bobbin and a red hook. You can do a number of variations, which I believe uh, Tristan from Insano Fly Fishing is going to show you some different variations. You can do a number of different colors. We've tied these in a number of different colors, but this one, red analid seems to work just about everywhere we go. I've got a red, all red size 20 hook that I like to use. I like to tie my analids again, small size 20, uh, sometimes 22s. If you can find them, those seem to be work everywhere. Now this is probably going to be one of the easiest and the simplest flies that you'll learn to tie and the quickest you can crank them out. And basically what you do is you buy this red flex floss and you have to get Flex flux because it is very flexible. You find out there's a reason for that. You just take a piece of red flex floss. Again, no bobbin, no thread. Some of uh, my partners and some of the fishermen that I fish with in Sano Flies, they like to tie a th red, uh, either red head or a pink head or even a black head with thread on the end. And you can do that, but it, to me, it's a lot of time wasted. So I'm going to take the flex floss, I'm going to stretch it out, and I'm going to pull it over. And just like I would with a bobbin or thread, I'm gonna pull one way with the tag in, and notice I've got it stretched pretty thin. I'm gonna pull the other way, and I'm gonna slowly start tying back over. And as I pull this, I'm gonna pull this tag in as tight as I can. So you want this body as thin as you can, all the way back to the tag end, okay? So, once I've got the tag in there, I'm not gonna mess with that because I'm gonna show you later what we're gonna do with that. Here's the key to the red analid. I like to use hackle pliers. Some of my buddies can do it just by using their fingers and they twist the flex flops into like a little mini rope. And if your fingers are tacky, it's pretty easy to do with your fingers. Notice I'm just twirling, twirling, twirling. If you can't get that little rope segmented tight twirl, you can always put your hackle pliers on and you can spin it with your hackle pliers. So I'll show you both ways. That's how I do it with the, the fingers. If I couldn't get a good spin, I would put my hackle pliers on and I would just spin the flex floss. And all the time you wanna stretch it you want it, get a good stretch. You want to get a nice, tight rope. When you feel that you've got a nice, tight rope, you're going to make sure and pinch that flex floss nice and tight. And notice I pull back on the tag end. I pull and I stretch that flex floss almost to its as far as it can go as I start to wrap forward. If you notice, and we'll zoom in here shortly, I'm going to wrap one layer, one right after another. And we'll zoom in on the fly here and you'll see the segmentation here shortly once we finish the fly. So I want a nice, even segmentation all the way up, right to behind the head. When you get to behind the head, then you're gonna to wanna to take your tackle pliers off and you're gonna basically wanna take that stretch your flex floss out and you're going to want to do one maybe not more than two wraps because you don't want that head too big thumb on here once you pop off thumb over the eye of the hook so you pull your thread flex floss through you want to going to want to put your thumb here hold the fly pull that flex floss nice and tight you can see i got it pretty stretched once i got it pretty tight and stretched then we just clip the flex floss we pull here, clip there, make sure you don't clip the fly, and we go with a little bit of cement on the head. And what you'll find is when you zoom in on the fly, you see that segmentation and those little bumps. Easiest fly in the world to tie. Again, a lot of my friends and in Sano fly fishing, we'll like to use black thread 
and at this point they would tie off the black head. Uh, I have a buddy that loves uh, like a fluorescent pink. Um, all colors work and you can get this material in just about any color, which I believe Tristan in Insano Fly Fishing is going to show you a number of different and we've had all colors work. Uh, Anilids, again, you will find anywhere and everywhere. This is one of our go-to flies. If you want to catch fish, small, segmented anilids, you will catch fish. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Tristan over here at Insano Fly Fishing. Before we get started with this video, just want to show you a little bit of our merch here. We've got the Insano. Got the Insano logo on the back. Fish measure in pounds. So be on the lookout for some things like that here to come. But uh, what we wanted to build off of was the segment that uh, Peach just got into with uh, the annelids. So he just showed you the fly he tied was the red annelid. One of our favorites to use here at Insano Fly Fishing. He showed you the very basic red flex floss with the red hook on it. Here's how the finished product looks right there. So I'm just going to show you what I like to do with my annelids. I like to add a little variation because every stream is a little bit different. Not all annelids are red. There's a lot of different annelids. I mean, annelids have been around for a really long time. So there's a lot of different variations you can do with it, different streams. One I feel works the best for me is setting a red annelid up with a darker colored body. So I like the way, what I particularly like about Doing the analyst this way is with the red hook, you can see the undercolor through it. It almost gives that appearance of like a translucent um, exoskeleton, which uh, analysts have to dig and burrow through the ground. So we're going to start off here today. Instead of going with the normal red flex floss, we are going to start off with some lighter green coloring flex floss. If you guys can see that there. So it's the same material, just different color. So I'm going to start off. I leave a little tag end. Just want to make sure you get that tag end wrapped down. Boom, 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 boom. All the way to the back. And my placing is a little different from where Peach likes to place his annelid. I try and put it down as far in the hook as possible. I like to get that body um, as far down as possible. So I'm just going to wrap as far as I can back covering all the tag end until I can't no more. Right about there. Okay. I'm gonna grab onto that. Kind of get that out of the way. Take my tag end. I like to cut my tag end right away. It's kind of annoying, so I like to get it out of the way. So don't have to worry about it. So now what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna twist a little bit. Get it nice and tight, twist it, give more of a circular contour, and I'm just gonna go exactly back over. Get that twisted, and just take your time. You want it to look good, you want the segments to look good. The one thing that differentiates an annelid from a lot of different other insects and bugs is how the body is so segmented throughout the whole entire thing. With other insects, you have the abdomen, dorsals, you have everything like that, wings, legs. Annelids are a very simplistic creature. I mean, they survived for millions of years just burrowing in the ground. So there's not very much that's changed from them, except for like colors, um, things like that. So here, once we get here, take my whip finisher. Um, I don't like to go too predominant because most annelids you see, they don't really have a big head. And it's just kind of like personal preference, my uh, little flavor to it. I don't like to, I like to keep the head as small and tight as possible. I like a really tight, compact body. I feel like the fish like that a little bit more with the annelid. And then I am just going to, boom. And as you can see, we have our green annelid, as I like to call it, the Christmas special with the red hook underneath. And as you could tell, you could see a lot of the red coming through, especially in the light. When you see in the light, it almost looks like the body is a little more translucent compared to the red, and you could see the body underneath, kind of giving the illusion that it really is an insect and it has internal organs working in there. So I really think this is uh, something that works 
a lot of the time. I mean, the red analyte works as well too. I just think it depends on the stream conditions, water clarity, things like that. But this is honestly one of my go-to flies. I toss this on everywhere and give it a shot. And most of the time it works, either that or red analytes. So there's a lot of different things you can do with the analytes, different colors. I mean, we have tons of different color flex loss. Like Peach was saying earlier, saying earlier, you can make it with a bigger head, a more predominant head. Just kind of depends on what's working, uh, what you like best. And that's the nice thing about time flies. You can add your own little spice and flavor to literally almost everything. But yeah, there it is for you guys. Go check out Insano Fly Fishing. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Everywhere. Go follow us more. Go interact with us. You want to know more about the flies? Send us direct message. Send us a message on Facebook, Twitter. Tweet us. You know, we're down to chat. Have a good time with you guys. Show you some videos, some flies, how to tie them. Just let us know. Hit us up. Contact us.